never, ever in my lifetime have I seen what is patently a corrupt government like this one, where they are taking from the poor and they are giving to the already rich. Factually, we have seen yesterday, there was the Public um, Accounts Committee put out and nobody's reported it in mainstream media, that in the two years preceding Johnson becoming um, Prime Minister, there was an approximation of five and a half billion pounds on, uh, of, of fraud and waste on government departments. In the following two years, when Sunak was Chancellor, that quadrupled to 21 billion pounds of fraud and it's not being investigated. And this report said, not that mainstream uh, media reported any of it at all, people wouldn't even know it existed because they leaked it out on the day Prince Harry was in court, again, using the bad news day tactic. I'm Carol Vordman, I don't have a title. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, broadcaster extraordinaire and STEM ambassador, but yes. Um, so what are we doing here today? Why are you here? So Best for Britain is an organisation which has taken a lot of uh, statistical analysis. And today, so this is myself, uh, John Curtis, Professor, uh, Luke Trill, uh, and also Naomi from Best for Britain. And they have put together the most accurate snapshot of today. If there was a general election next month uh, with the new boundaries for constituencies, how would that come out if there was a general election? So who would vote for what and so on? It's, it, it's very accurate, but it is not a prediction of what will happen probably next year. And we've seen that Labour currently, huge gains, but it's all up for grabs. Yeah. So fundamentally, um, the, you know, one snapshot would say that Labour will win 470 seats and the Conservatives will be reduced down to less than 130. But that's probably not realistic. Um, in, because we have a first-past-the-post system, it, we don't have any form of PR. So... Um, Sadly, uh, there's only this country and Belarus within the confines of Europe that who uses first past the post. That's not great, really, is it? Uh, anyway, um, so what what the statistics show, and also Luke is here to talk it because he runs a, an organisation which has a lot of focus groups and what people are feeling um, is that it is all up for grabs. Uh, it's unlikely to be a Tory government in future, um, but who knows? They say a week is a long time in politics, we've got a good year yet to go. So, um, you know, I am here because I want to talk about tactical voting. So I worked with a small group uh, who set up uh, Stop the Tories, Stop Vote, because I, I started voting in 1979, I'm 62 years of age, and I've seen politicians come and go, obviously, during all of those years. I grew up in the 70s when there were the miners' strikes. We, I did my homework, you know, on um, the three-day working week where we only had electricity for three days and had to do it by candlelight. All of those things, I've lived through all of that, so I understand all of that. But never, ever in my lifetime have I seen what is patently a corrupt government like this one, where they are taking from the poor and they are giving to the already rich. Factually, we have seen yesterday, there was the Public um, Accounts Committee put out, and nobody's reported it in mainstream media, that in the two years preceding Johnson becoming um, Prime Minister, there was an approximation of five and a half billion pounds on, uh, of, of fraud and waste on government departments. In the following two years, when Sunak was Chancellor, that quadrupled to 21 billion pounds of fraud and it's not being investigated. And this report said, not that mainstream uh, media reported any of it at all, people wouldn't even know it existed because they leaked it out on the day Prince Harry was in court again using the bad news day tactic. So they said that the HMRC is a department for concern they said uh, that of the £7.9 billion that went into COVID testing, £6 billion of that 
was uh, given to the companies recommended by Tory MPs and ministers and peers. You know, it goes on and on and on and it's not being reported. I see that because I go digging for it and then on social media I put it out to my followers. And they see it for what it is. I mean, I could go on. I could go on for hours about the corruption. Well, I'm very happy to. But, you know, Greg Hans, the current chairman of the Conservative, the last one had to go because he'd been dodging tax and then he lied about it, Zahawi. This one, not reported in mainstream media at all. This one, £25.8 million contract he gave to his friend, his personal friend, who was a chair of Hammersmith and Fulham Conservatives. His name is Mark Higton. He had set up a company called Lux Lifestyle, uh, which hadn't traded at all. Suddenly, they get a £25.8 million contract for PPE. Oh, that's nice. He then sets up three other companies, Lux Care, Lux Care Consortium 2, Lux Care Consortium 3. So you've got four companies. Not one of those companies has filed company accounts yet for that period of time and he is consistently trying to strike off the companies. And HMRC, I believe it's HMRC, I don't know that for a fact, are saying no, we can't, refusal to strike, that's what, what it's called. And it's all there on Companies House, you can go and see it, everyone else can go, go and see it. So why isn't Greg Hans asking his mate, what's happened to the money? Where's the money? These are questions that, that people should be asking. You know, back in, in the 70s or 80s, people would have to resign automatically just for the discovery of that. And now we crack on as though nothing's happened. Well, it has happened, and it's affecting people. It's affecting people whose bills are going through the roof, who can bet, you know, for the food banks. We know all about this, and it's disgusting. I've never known anything like it in my lifetime, which makes me become very active. You know, I've been involved um, on the sidelines of politics, working for both the major parties at various points to do with education and children, because that, that's my passion. And, um, and now I, I'm all for tactical voting. I want this government at the next election to only come in with 80 seats maximum. I want them not to be able to even form the opposition. That's what I want, and that is what I will go for. Do you find it twofold question? Do you find it worrying that the tax issues don't seem to come up in polling or focus groups? But and meanwhile, do you find it edifying that nurses strikes do? Well, the non-dom issue really has hit Sunak. Uh, and then when that was discovered by a newspaper, that was his wife choosing, because to, to have non-dom tax status, you have to actively say to HMRC, I am choosing non-dom tax status. This isn't something you could say, oh, I didn't know. Right, it is an active thing. Mm. For that, you say, I will play, pay a flat fee of £30,000 a year. She chose to do that for many years. Since he became MP in 2015, it is estimated that the tax she did not pay, which you or I, as British citizens, would have to pay, and not choosing non-DOM tax status on that particular part of her income, she has failed to pay £20 million. Now, he said when it was discovered, you're trying to smear my wife. No, mate, we're just saying we don't think it may be legal, but then you lot are the ones who've set up what the laws are. And, and you know, Labour have now said we're going to stop non-DOM tax, non tax status. Absolutely right. There is no level playing field as far as tax is concerned. And, uh, and you know, then she said, oh, oh, actually, no, no, I'll pay it in future. But she hasn't offered to pay the 20 million that's still effectively owing to HMRC. So, you know, it, it just goes on and I could, I could bore you to death with the stuff that I have found. And not I have found, it, it's there. Sometimes I look at the Financial Times because they have a lot, they have brilliant journalism there. And obviously it's hugely accurate because they deal with the city. But the big thing is, where do I start? But uh, Sunak and his cohort are trying to bring in the financial services and markets bill. And I believe that they're clinging on so they can push this through. 
after the global financial crisis in 2008, which destroyed people, and not a single banker was ever jailed, by the way, let's point that out. After that, Gordon Brown introduced a lot of um, regulation to restrict the city. So he separated com what are called commercial banks, like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and so on, with retail banks, which you and I would know, you know, Royal Bank of Scotland and NatWest and blah, 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 separated them. This Financial Services and Markets Bill is being put into place to encourage the marketing of the city, as if they haven't got enough money. Um, so they're taking down the legislation that was put in place and the protections that were put in place for the public and the economy back in 2008, 2009. So that's good. No one's reporting on it. It's just like, hang on. So we've got banks crashing in America. And if you read the FT, you see that the, 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 there is likely to be many more. Um, and, and no one's reporting on it. And I just think, uh, and the perception, people say, oh, well, you know, they've got enough money. The one understanding in life that I have is that the super rich never have enough. I have never known greed like they have. You have to understand that psychology. You were talking about pensions and about how so many people haven't received their pensions or what they should have yes, received. Yes, yeah. yes, so how many of these voters do you think will be moving with their feet? So, you know, you, we're talking about teachers on strike, nurses on strike, people who haven't been given their pensions. How, effect, you know, how much effect will that have? I think, I think that's the biggest effect. You know, people care mostly uh, about what affects them because the people have busy lives. They're not easy lives. And... Uh, put out yesterday, you know, a little quote from this uh, committee report, the Public Accounts Committee report about that. And I said, tell every pensioner you know that this is what they're doing. Um, uh, RT, uh, you know, retweet, retweet, retweet. And, and I, I do believe that, you know, what? What? Daily Express, you know, their readers are all pensioners. Why aren't they reporting it? They're not reporting it because they want to support the cons cons Conservative Party whatever that party says or does it's a disgrace and it's it i swear to you nothing was perfect before don't get me wrong i'm not saying oh look back and that was perfect what i'm saying is nothing is like i see today i've never known anything like it